for the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. Lord of all, to of the day and of the night hill and vale and tree and flower sun and moon and stars of light Lord of all to thee we raise this our gift of thy to our race so freely give grace is human and divine flowers of earth and buds of heaven Lord of all to thee To thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. of grace is Jesus my Redeemer. There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hope, my can sing all is mine yet not I but through Christ in me the night is dark but I am not forsaken for by my side the Savior, He will stay. I labor all in weakness and rejoicing, for in my need His power is displayed. To this I hold, my shepherd will defend. Shout.
If you've not met John and Leslie Fender, I'm going to ask them to stand up. Uh, some of our newer pastors that have joined us and his wife. And uh, next Sunday, you will uh, participate in an installation service where John, as well as Ken McCurd, who's going to speak to you tonight, will be installed as one of our pastors. Now, Ken is going to come up, but Lisa, if, if you don't mind me embarrassing you, if you could stand right here yes and be sure to speak to lisa and ken as well as john and leslie and just introduce um yourself tell them your name and i promise you they'll remember it immediately they have they're amazingly gifted people and uh they will uh speak to you by first name every time they see you i want to introduce ken by telling you about a friend of mine named jay west now jay west was Sandra's boyfriend in college before um, the Lord helped her change her mind and wise up. But Jay West was a very mature believer, and he not only supported Sandra as she worked through her feelings towards this old high school boyfriend who'd now come to faith in Christ, and all of her friends had told her that... You need to stay away from him. He's dangerous. And for the most part, she did. But um, through prayer and the Holy Spirit, she began to consider going out with me. But I tell you this because Sandra said no to Jay West in order to say yes to me. So I have quite a bit of respect for myself because I won Sandra over Jay. He was a aerospace engineer and uh, quite... Um, I would say uh, charismatic, at least we'll leave it at that. And so I was, I was uh, very thankful that she said not only yes to me, she said no. Well, Ken McCurd was uh, pastoring a church in New York, and several churches were asking him to join their staff. And those are churches that I think all of us in cities and where we would, we would say those are cities we'd want to live in. And those are places and ministries we'd want to serve in. And Ken called me on the phone in the middle of a search where churches were pursuing him. And he said, I want you to pray about the possibility of me applying to join your staff. And I was humbled first that uh, he was um, reaching out to me. I should have been reaching out to him. But we were in lockdown, and we were not looking for pastors at the time. And then he allowed me to walk with him through this process, even before we were at a place where we could search. And even before he heard from us, he listened to the Lord, and he said no to other churches waiting on the Lord. And it really told me not only is he seeking 
um, another move for himself, but he's seeking God's will for us. So when the session interviewed him and when he was called, it was a double joy to know uh, that he said no to others to say yes to us. And I have appreciated him as a friend for many years, and I count it an honor with John and Ken to be colleagues. So come and share God's word. And welcome to this beautiful place, the Presbyterian Peninsula, and to this beautiful congregation. Thank you. Yeah. All right, thanks. Okay, I'm going to work on uh, knowing your name. So on the count of three, just shout out your names. And let me see if I can catch it. One, two, three. Okay, yep, I'm not going to remember. <laughs> uh, got... Timothy. Okay, I got Timothy. Thank you. God's given us an opportunity to enjoy this beautiful... What's your name? I miss that one. God's given us an opportunity to enjoy this wonderful, wonderful uh, vista, uh, the fellowship that we have together. This, uh, we've come from different areas, but we have something in common. We are part of the body of Christ. And as we were reminded this morning, that's our significance. Our significance is that we are in Christ. So let's gather together a people of God with one purpose, to hear from the one who loves us and who has called us into a relationship with himself and love him back as we, devotion, as we devote ourselves to him. Let's pray. Father, you've given us your word. The writer to Hebrews said that you spoke in the past through prophets, but in these last days you have spoken to us through your son. And this evening, we're going to hear a message from Jeremiah, a message that contains your word to us. I pray, O oh God, that you would open our eyes, open our ears, and let us hear wonderful truth from your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I was asked to talk a little bit about change. Incidentally, um, uh, Mike talked about uh, other churches, my saying to other churches, no, but I was surprised that this church said yes. So I'm so happy that you said yes, and John and I have the opportunity to serve together. Thank you so much for that. Uh, change can be wonderful, but change can also be very challenging. We live in a time where change happens constantly. There are in that international change, geopolitical change, health changes. Uh, even in our church, uh, one pastor, the Lord is called to the mission field, and he left us. He's on his way to the mission field, and just recently God's called three pastors to come and serve you. Uh, we just changed our um, focus as a congregation, our mission statement, commending the greatness of God and Jesus Christ to all people and all generations is a change for us. Some changes are wonderful. Some changes can be challenging. And I want us to think this evening, even in the midst of change, that we have a providential God whose care for us does not change. And, and the reason I want us to think about this is that when we face corporate challenges and personal challenges, I want us to remember that there is one in heaven to whom we can go whose love and commitment does not change with the circumstances that we find ourselves living in, that he remains constant and true. There's an old catechism that was written in 1563, the Heidelberg Catechism, and is used by the Reformed Church. It's a devotional catechism, and its original intent was to be used on Sunday mornings 52 Sunday mornings throughout the year as a teaching tool. 
And the first question reads like this. What is your only comfort in life and in death? And part of the answer reads this way. Um, that he preserves me in such a way that without the will of my heavenly Father, not a hair can fall from my head. Indeed, all things must work together for my salvation. Now, in that answer, God reveal, uh, the uh, catechism reveals an intimate view of God who cares so much for us, and he knows us so well that not even a hair can fall from our head. The other day I was looking in the mirror, and uh, I noticed I have, a, I have a little scar on my forehead. And uh, seems like five years ago, but uh, 20 years ago, my hairline just barely covered that scar. The scar is here. My hairline is here. The first hint that I got was uh, I went to the barber the other day, and instead of standing in front of me to trim um, the top of my head, he stood next to me and just kind of went like this. I'm losing my hair, unfortunately. But God knows me so well that not one of those little hairs is lost without his care for me and his involvement in my life. Now, that's dedication. That's love. I'm, I want to think for just a few moments about a verse in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Jeremiah 29, 11, on the New King James Version reads, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. I want us to think about this just for a few moments because this verse, for me, gives me hope when I think about change. Because God is speaking to Judah and ultimately to us because he's in a covenant relationship with us as well, that his care for us goes beyond the circumstances that we find ourselves in. For Judah, Judah was just given the news that they would go into captivity, into Babylon, and it was not good news. But God was telling them, I know the thoughts that I have for you. Uh, I'm thinking beyond your captivity, and I'm telling you that I have a future and a hope for you. I have plans for you. The word thought is the word that means that God, uh, his thoughts are not so much facts, but his thoughts are a creation of new ideas that brings a benefit that he is thinking for our good. He's thinking about us for our benefit. When Jesus taught his disciples to pray, he said, when you pray, pray, our Father who art in heaven. And that was amazing. Because what he didn't say was that you should address God as Normal, normally we would address him, High King of Heaven, or Lord God Almighty. But in this sense, our Father, or Abba Father, the God who cares about us. And, and God, through Jeremiah, says, I know the thoughts I have for you. Did you know that God thinks about you? In the midst of your... Um, Concern about the future? Concern about the rise in COVID? Concerns about what's going to happen when you go back to work on Tuesday? Concern about what's going to happen when schools open or close? That God's thoughts for you remain constant. He, he's not changed by the circumstances that affect us. That his thoughts have a direction. 
uh, a hope and a future, a future and a hope. Future really means that God is looking beyond the circumstances of today, even though he is with us in today, but he's looking toward our future. He's looking for the time where he's forming us into a, a, a body, into a Christ-likeness, where our salvation will finally be revealed. He's, he's pointing us to that day, that my thoughts for you are for a future and a hope. There's going to be an end, Judah, to your suffering. There's going to be an end to that. And in the end, I'm going to call you to myself. I'm going to woo you back. And I'm going to give you all the promises that you're looking forward to. Now, fortunately for us, we can look back in the uh, Old Testament and see that God's word was absolutely true. We can look back and see that God in his providence did exactly what he said he would do. So why am I asking us to think about this today? Because God doesn't change. His character of faithfulness in Jeremiah's day is the same today. And his thoughts for his people in Jeremiah's day is the same for his thoughts for you in this day. He cares about you. He cares about you. And he thinks about you. Just think about that for a moment. Um, one of my most favorite Bible st stories is in the life of Christ when the disciples were on the river, uh, on the sea, and the boat was tossed around, and Jesus was sleeping in the boat. You know this story. He was sleeping in the boat, and, and the disciples said, don't, don't you care that we're drowning? And, and Jesus got up, and he said, peace be still. I think that's the coolest thing. And, and, the, and the waters were, were calm. I've always had this dream that I would stand at the shore at the beach and see the waves, and I would say, Peace be still. And everybody on the beach would see the wonder of my power as I, as I stilled the waters. I'm ashamed to say that I actually tried that one time. And fortunately, no one knew what I was doing. But you may not be surprised, but the waves did not stop. The waves were still powerful. So my words... They don't mean that much. But imagine if God were walking on the shore and he said today what he said back then, that he would have the power, his word would have the power to control nature. That very God has just told us in his word that he's thinking about you. And his thoughts toward you, his thoughts toward Judah, and his thoughts toward you is to give you a future and a hope. Uh, there's a biblical hope and an earthly hope. Our earthly hope is, I hope it's not humid next week. I hope if it gets up to 90 that at night it's going to go down to 50. I hope it's not going to be as bad as it was last week. That's a wish. Biblical hope is a firm expectation based on the faithfulness of God. That there's a hope that's based on God's record of keeping his word. And what God was telling Judah is that he's giving them a biblical hope, a hope based on his faithfulness. And that's the same hope that you have. I love the catechism, the Heidelberg Catechism. I want to read one more as I close. I want to read, uh, I believe it's question 28. 
And it asks, how does God's providence help us? Listen to this description of a God who cares about you. We can be patient when things go against us, thankful when things go well. And for the future, we have good confidence in our faithful God and Father that nothing in creation will separate us from his love. For all creatures are so completely in God's hand that without his will, they can never, they can neither move or be moved. God's care for you is constant. God's care for you is complete. It's powerful. It has meaning and purpose, and it points to your future, your future where when Christ comes again, you will be revealed as a son and daughter of Christ, free from the things that hold us back in our sin when we're finally in his presence as a glorious future. But he's working in us now, moving us to that point. God thinks about you today. He thinks about you even in the midst of change. His thoughts for you are amazing. There's a song that we're going to sing in closing called How Deep the Father's Love for Us. If we could, if we could describe how deep the Father's love for us, we would be here all evening and into the morning and throughout next week, but we can't. But we can celebrate tonight that God's love for us is deep, his love for us is good, and I encourage you to join us as we sing together how deep the Father's love for us. Well, as uh, mentioned earlier, um, if you do need a refresh on the words, you can pull the words up on the First Prez app. We'll have the song sheet right in there for you. Christ, His 
Father, for this Sabbath day in these beautiful grounds, we are thankful that we can rest in your loving care for us. Give us the grace to find hope in your steadfast love and faithfulness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you to all, and this concludes our official portion of our evening which means that you're welcome to stay as long as you would like. Parents, I will tell you that the lifeguard will uh, now not be watching your children, and you need to get your children uh, to the right spaces and uh, clear out of the lake. But uh, you're welcome to stay as long as uh, you would like, but we're finished for the evening. God bless you, and uh, we will pray that you have a great day off if you're able to rest tomorrow and then a great week together. Like a bird from these prison walls of floor